with our brothers and sisters in the Lord to worship and to hear the word. And of course, those of you who joined online, we want to welcome you this morning and we just believe the Holy Spirit is going to move today. We're going to hear a word in season and our lives will be changed. We'll leave this place changed today. Amen. So Father, we just commit this time to you. We ask you to have your way. Holy Spirit, we yield to you. We say you are the spirit of freedom and liberty and we just thank you for that freedom here today. Freedom from chains, freedom from bondages, freedom from addictions, Lord. Freedom from heaviness, freedom from sorrow. We thank you for your joy in this place today. We put on those garments of praise and we shake off every spirit of heaviness. All the heaviness and the problems of the week, Lord. We just lay them at your feet today and we say, Lord, have your way in our lives. We focus on you. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Not on our circumstances, not on the person next to me. But my eyes are on you, Jesus. You're the author. You're the finisher of our faith. Our eyes are on you, Lord. So we come against all distraction right now. We just pray peace, the shalom of God in this room. And any unclean thing, anything that's gone on during the week that's, you know, a lot of you, Lord, we just thank you that your anointing is here, Lord, and it cleanses and purifies in Jesus' name. Thank you for your angels, your ministering angels in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you just to close your eyes for a minute and just lift your hands up and just say, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender every fear. I surrender every worry. I surrender every care to you. I put my trust in you because you are faithful. I love you, Lord. I worship you. Let my praises rise as incense this morning before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if you haven't, you're not standing up now, you can stand up and let's get ready to worship, amen. Let's celebrate the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord, Jesus is alive, He is risen, and He is the King of glory. Come 
alive, you will be jumping. You will be celebrating that Jesus is alive. You will be celebrating that Jesus is risen. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's risen in Jesus' name. Do you see what I see? That the end is empty. the name of Jesus, 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 be exalted in our hearts, be exalted in this place, be exalted in this nation, God, be exalted in all the nations of the earth, because the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell in it, Lord Jesus, be exalted, King of glory, enter in, enter in, Jesus, we know you're coming back again, God, we just want to be in your presence, God. Every moment, Lord Jesus, into eternity, we just want to be in your presence, Lord. Jesus, you're welcome in this place, God. You're welcome in this place, Jesus. King of glory, yes, the world. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be. just want to be with you, King of glory, King of glory, fill this place, I just want to be with you, I just want to be with you, yes the world
just want to be with you. Yes, Lord, hear your people sing.
those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus, we call upon your name this morning. Jesus, the name above all names. King of glory. The glory of the Lord is in this room. Church, I urge you, call upon his name this morning. Nothing is bigger than our God, creator of heavens and earth. Call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved.
Just, just come up, the, up here and we want to just, just stand in the presence of the, the glory of the Lord is here. We just believed this morning. We just believe this morning for people who've been believing for years for miracles in their bodies. We just believe this is the moment. Your presence is here. Just keep pressing in. Don't be spectating. Just keep pressing in. His presence is here. He wants you whole. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Jesus. Come on, just come up. Just, just lift your hands up in the presence of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Just come forward. Thank you, Father, for your healing anointing right now that's destroying every yoke of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father, for your healing anointing that's flowing through these people's bodies right now right now in Jesus name right now we just thank you father oh we thank you Jesus your anointing destroys every yoke of sickness and disease oh we thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you did not die in vain you died for these precious people to walk in divine health we just thank you Jesus we thank you father wholeness wholeness in the name of Jesus nothing missing nothing broken in their lives in Jesus name Lord we curse every sickness every disease every infirmity right now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you precious Jesus for your anointing your anointing is here right now to destroy every yoke of sickness and disease in Jesus name in the name of Jesus in the name in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that anointing flowing in their bodies right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Jesus. Precious Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you haven't been prayed with, come forward. Pastor John, Pastor Philip. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Your healing anointing. Blowing. Blowing in this girl, lady's body, Lord. We thank you. This precious daughter of God thank you Jesus spirit soul and body in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus complete breakthrough thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank 
thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. Your anointing destroys every yoke of sickness and disease. We say it destroys it, it eradicates it, it removes it. In Jesus' name, in the name of every other name, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabashe, Rabashe, Rabaha. Oh, Rabashe, Rabaha. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. The name above every name, every spirit of infirmity, we loose your hold. You loose your hold right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. In Jesus. Restoration in Tomac's body. Restoration. Straightening. Straightening. Realignment. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just keep thanking him for what he's doing in this room. It's nothing to do with us. It's all about him. It's all about him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Precious blood, Jesus. Precious blood. Restoration of every cell in his brain, Lord. Complete wholeness. Complete wholeness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
heaven. There's no disease, there's no poverty in heaven. Yeah. Heaven is here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now just thank Him. Just lift your hands and just thank Him. We thank you, Lord, for those miracles that have taken place today in these people's bodies and their minds in Jesus' name. Thank you. It's important to thank Him. It's important to honor Him. Thank you, Jesus. We want to hear those praise reports. We want people to tell us in the coming weeks what God has been doing in their lives. We're going forward. We're not going back. And we're not staying still either. Thank you, Jesus. From glory to glory, from strength to strength. That's why it's so important you're sensitive. You shouldn't be out in the foyer having coffee when the worship is on. There's two hours, a two hour window you have in the presence of the Lord each week and we need to reverence that. We're not gonna see any demonstration of the spirit and power of the Holy Spirit is being quenched or we're putting our flesh first. Okay, so. So let's come in here expectant every Sunday, but come in here with a hunger to hear from his word, to enter and press into his presence, and God will move. We just say, Lord, we give you room to move in our services. Because without you in our lives, there's no point in living. Thank you, Lord. So we repent. We repent, Lord, of any irreverence we've had towards you, Jesus. We repent of it right now. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all impurities. judge yourself don't judge those around you judge yourself I judge myself but as a body we can do a lot more to contribute to what God wants to do in this place thank you Lord amen well if you want to take your seats give a welcome to the person next to you You're very welcome say hello to somebody Praise the Lord. And if it's your first time here today, just give us a wave. We'd love to give you one of our guest packs. You're very welcome, sir. You're from Dublin, yes? You're welcome this morning over here. Yes, sir. Where are you from? Kildare, you're welcome today. Over here, sir. You can keep your hand up. Where are you from? Dublin too, yes, that's wonderful. Yes, over here. Swaziland. Oh, that might be a first. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Where are you from? I can't hear. <laughs> but you're welcome anyway. Anybody else? Dublin? Okay, just keep your hands up and we'll give you our guest pack. And in the guest pack, there's a little card. Oh, we missed somebody here. Yes. Where are you from? Texas. Ah, oh, welcome. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. From Bolivia. Bienvenida. Oh, yes, over here. <laughs> Me. You're very welcome today. Okay, yes. France. France, yes. Bienvenue. <laughs> yes. Brazil. Okay. Bienvenido. Am I right? Okay. And here. Donegal. You're welcome. All sorts of parts of the country. And over here. Pardon? Mexico. Bienvenido. Great. Well, if you just keep your hands up, our ushers will give you a guest pack, and there's a little card in it. And uh, oh, over here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to miss you. Where are you from? 
from Dublin. Yes, great. You can fill in the card and leave it in the Get Connected in the foyer. There's a little table there. And if you want prayer or if you want any more information about the church, you can fill that card in. And so, yeah, you have, yes, we welcomed you. And yes, Philippines, you're welcome today. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, we have just a few announcements before we do our baby dedication. I'll just, well, the ba baby and child and child, two children and one baby. Um, so if you want to make your ways up here, just want to let you know about Bible school is starting on Monday, the 24th of April. Uh, so that's class one. That's for those of you who have not done Bible school at all. And you would like to, uh, you can fill in an online form, which is allnations.ie forward slash Bible school. Or you can get an application form, I think, as well, from the Get Connected table. So I'd encourage you, if you haven't done it before, it's an online course. It's, fr it's free currently, but it, we will be charging in September due to admin costs. We have to employ somebody to do the admin. So, um, but uh, currently, it's free, and it's a great blessing. We're very grateful for all our wonderful teachers. Um, oh, <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad about reading out this one here, but no hot drinks in the stadium, and as I have my cup of tea in the front row there. <laughs> But uh, no, just, we've just asked that just, um, I know Dave is, uh, doesn't want hot drinks in case there's spillages and, and children get burnt and so on. So, um, is that all our announcements? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so um, we have, uh, where are we? Are you on your way? Where, where, Thais, oh yes, Thais and Pedro and baby Daniel and we've got Samuel and we've got Sophia. They're all being dedicated today in the presence of the Lord. So we're delighted to have them this morning. They're a great blessing to this church here. And we know God's got great things in store for them. So, okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, you know, First Samuel talks about um, Hannah. And Hannah had a burden to have a child. And uh, she came up into the presence of the Lord, and that's where all the answers are found. And verse 10 says, She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. And she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And so she prayed that and she made a vow she made a promise to God uh, that if the Lord granted her a child that she would dedicate him to the Lord and um, you know the, the the amazing thing is if you read on further that Eli the priest came along and thought she was drunk and um, uh, and you know I, I read that and I think Lord help me not to miss what you are doing Help me not to miss the miracle of the moment. Because this woman was praying a prayer that would not only impact Israel, but the nations and generations to come. And out of that place of anguish, God granted her um, a, a beautiful child, Samuel, and she dedicated him to the Lord. And so she brought him to the Lord. And, uh, and verse 27 says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I've asked of him. And um, praise God. So uh, Samuel turned out to be a mighty man of God. And this is what this family are doing today, is they're dedicating their children to the Lord. And uh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so we, uh, so uh, Samuel, Daniel, and Sophia. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We just dedicate, Lord, these children to you, Lord God. And we just pray a blessing upon them, Lord God. And we dedicate them to your kingdom in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that your will will be done in their lives. We pray that they will walk with you, that they will serve your purposes in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you will anoint them, that you will keep them, you will guide them, you will lift them, Lord, you will protect them, Lord God, and that they will grow up to be a blessing in Jesus' name, Lord, that they will walk in your ways, that they will hear your voice, that they will do your will, Lord, that they will glorify you in all that they say and do in Jesus' wonderful name. We thank you for doing a mighty work of restoration in Jesus' wonderful name, Amen. Lord God. We bless this young man Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless him, Lord, and we dedicate them to your kingdom, Lord. We declare that every curse is broken, Father God. Every inherited curse, every generational curse is broken, Lord, because they are your children and they are blessed, and we dedicate them to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. So we just get uh, Toby and Mila to come up. This is their last Sunday. Yes. They are going to Poland. Toby has stolen her and taking her to Poland. <laughs> no. Do you want to come as well, Lydia? <laughs> Lord. So Lydia, in case you don't know, this is her daughter, Milena, and Ali is the other, where, Ali, somewhere else. <laughs> and uh, we're excited for them. We've known, we were just talking on the phone last night, she, she was 14 years old when she walked in the doors of our church in Smithfield, so we've known her for half her life, and we haven't known Toby as well, but, as long, but we, we love Toby dearly, and we forgive you for taking her off to Poland. <laughs> uh, but we know that, you know, we're, Come on, Ali. <laughs> okay, <laughs> only happy tears now, okay? Only happy tears. Um, but we, we're really excited because she was just saying how, just explain how, yeah. You were just saying how Kings have just since you made that decision to. Yeah, so we were looking for, we, for those of you that know, we've been living in Wicklow since we got married um, for ten, about ten. Ten, 10, almost 10 months now or so, and we were just like praying and you know uh, it was hard to find housing in Dublin and just no doors were opening up for us and then that we just went to the Lord and you know what do we do you know like where do you want us and we're both from Poland originally but I've lived here 20 years like I've known the pastor since I was 14 years old and Toby has been here five years serving in the church and we met here you know met my husband here and um, yeah, so he, he kind of wanted to go back to Poland before we got together, but then obviously we got married and, you know, life goes on and um, we just went to the Lord and we just felt like he was leading us um, there. It's something that we had in conversation for quite a while, you know, and, and I knew at some stage God was going to send me to Poland and that he had a purpose for me there. And then he sent my husband, being from Poland, which was a total surprise as well. But God is good and he knows what he's doing. And we just felt like, you know, where, where God is an opening door, sometimes it means that we have to go somewhere else, you know, and he opens doors. So since we've made that, we prayed about it and we felt such peace and such grace and an infilling of faith just for what he has for us over there. And just, we've just had such breakthrough since then. We've had financial breakthrough. We've had just so many open doors and just blessings and favor. So we're actually very, it's, it's bittersweet, of course. It's like, we're very, very excited to go, but we know that God has huge, like great plans for us, but all nations will always be our family. Like pastors are like my second parents, like my pastors, like, you know, a dad to me. Like I remember they bought me my first easel back in Smithfield which I painted on, I painted the lion on, and they've just always encouraged my creativity and always just let me, you know, forgot to just use my gifts in the church. And I love this church. It's, it's been, it's family and it always will be family. And I honor you guys and I'm so grateful for you guys and your life and everything that you're, you've done and everything that you're doing for the Lord. I, I love you and this isn't a goodbye to see you later, you know, I, I really believe and yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say something, Toby? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make it, Toby. You're going to make it. All will be good. <laughs> you know, I'm just reminded um, of all, all those years ago when um, when, when that family walked in. I still remember the moment I saw them at the back of the church. It was easy back then. There was probably 30 or 40 people at most. But um, I remember they, they, they trooped in in a line led by their grandmother, your, um, Milena's grandmother, and uh, she was a wonderful woman of God as well. And, uh, you know, this family had been such a blessing to us. And, um, you know, we've seen them both, uh, both Ali and Milena grow up. And... Um, 
you know, I was privileged to participate in Melinda's wedding. And um, I, I remember they decided they were going to do an outside wedding. And um, <laughs> the weather just looked conspicuously like Ireland on that particular day. The clouds, I knew, I said, this is not going to end well. And um, anyway, they, I remember she walked up and she looked so beautiful. And um, about 60 seconds into the wedding, it started lashing rain. <laughs> And, and the pastor was there doing his best speaking, and she was there getting wet. And I remember, I just felt like a dad, and I just went up and I grabbed her and says, come on, we're going to start this again, and we're going to start it inside. And uh, so we did, and we had a wonderful day. And, um, you know, I know you couldn't have got a better man. Yes. I know uh, Toby is a wonderful man of God. And, uh, yeah. I just want to add something to that, Pastor, because I remember you told me, I remember this very well, and I, God reminds me of it. Pastor John said, I think Toby will make a really great husband, and he has been an incredible husband. So if Pastor John thinks someone will make a good husband or wife, maybe listen to him, listen to God, but <laughs> listen to Pastor John too. Lord, so we just pray. We pray for this beautiful couple, Lord. We pray you will go before them, Lord. That you will make the, the rough places smooth, Lord. That you will provide, you will guide, you will direct, you will protect. In Jesus' name, bless this precious couple and let them be a blessing to Poland, Lord. And we pray, Father God, bring revival to Poland in the wonderful name of Jesus. Bring a great awakening, Lord, and continue to use their gifts, Lord. Help them to love each other, be faithful to each other, and to walk on your pathway all the days of their lives, Lord, and I thank you for the privilege and blessing of knowing them. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 Hey, God bless you. Thank you. Bless you, Mila. Amen. So we're just going to take up the offering this morning, and... Um, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes... And there's just one uh, particular verse. It's just going through my, my spirit. Um, and it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. And, um, and it says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember now your creator. Psalm 37 and verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who is pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And I believe those two verses apply towards each other, to each other in that the reality is everything that we have, God has given to us. And I'm not just talking about your job, I'm not just talking about the money in your bank, but you know what, if you're healthy in your body, you know, your health is your wealth. You can have 10 million in a bank and it'll do you no good if you're dying of cancer. Everything we have, God has given to us. And that's why it says, remember your creator. Because if you're a responsible person, you will remember the ESB. That's our electricity supply board. You will remember the gas board if your heating is gas. You will remember your mortgage. You will remember various bills and things that need to be made. Well, here the Bible says, first and foremost, remember the Lord. The Gospel of Matthew says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Too many believers remember God last and not first. If he truly is first in our lives, that applies to our money and to our giving as well as to every other area. There's no use us saying, God, you're first, but he doesn't come first when it comes to our giving, when it comes to our money. And so today, as we give, as we tithe, as we offer, we recognize, Lord, everything you've given to us, Lord God, everything we have, you've given to us, and we're simply giving back of that which you have given to us already. So again, if you're a member of the gift aid scheme, please put your number down. And again, the same uh, online, if you're giving online, because we can claim back on what you have given, and it costs you nothing. And if you want more information on that, you can check our website or go to the Get Connected desk after the service. Thank you. On we 
preach the prince of glory died my riches gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride Save in the death of Christ my God All the things that charm me most I sacrifice them That we were present far too small Love so amazing, so divine Demands my soul My life, my all Love so amazing, so amazing So divine, so divine Demands my soul My life, my today just that last verse where the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all can we sing that that verse just one last time Lydia where the whole realm where the whole realm That we're a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine. 
you can remain standing, please. We're just going to start by reading Psalm 24, if we can have that on the screen. If you brought your Bible, you can open that. How many of you brought your Bible to church? Amen. It's a good thing to do. Amen. Thank you, Lydia. That was beautiful. Psalm 24, and if we can uh, read that together. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read it out loud together. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. The title of the message today is King of Glory. Uh, the Bible commentator Matthew Henry uh, suggests uh, that this psalm was written for the occasion of David bringing the ark up from the house of Obed-Edom uh, to Jerusalem. And um, that's uh, recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 6. The first half of the chapter records how he did it the wrong way, but thankfully he learned from his mistakes and then he did it the right way. The ark, of course, was symbolic of the presence of the Lord. And that is something that we have to value, something that we have to cherish. And um, uh, so th this, this psalm is an entrance psalm and it most likely um, accompanied a procession into the temple where they would uh, chant or declare uh, this psalm. And so when you read Psalm 24, you see that there is a, a theme of entering. Um, firstly, humans entering into God's sphere. Um, verse 3 says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? So verse 3 to 6 is really dealing with us entering in with clean hands and a pure heart, not lifting up our soul to an idol. And then the, the second half uh, deals with uh, God entering into the human sphere. So firstly, it's us entering into God's fear, but then God entering into ours. Uh, verse 7 to 10, that the king of glory may enter in. And so we have this theme of, of entering in, uh, us entering into God's presence and, and God entering in among us. And so I believe this is a timely message for the day that we are in, because I believe we're the generation that is going to usher in the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so while this beautiful psalm, uh, you know, many of us have read it many, many times over the years, what I want to ask is, do we really understand what it's saying to us? Because it is speaking of the greatness and splendor of Christ, the King of glory. Amen. Because many times throughout the Old Testament, we see Christ prophesied, acknowledged. We see him in types and shadows. Um, and so uh, I believe it's speaking of, of the splendor and greatness of Christ. Christ, the glorious King of kings and Lord of lords, because to be honest, many times we're focused, we, we, we have a tendency or we're guilty of focusing on what he does rather uh, than in focusing on who he is. You know, many times, uh, like I said, as, as believers, we focus on, on what he does, but ignore who he is. And, um, and, and so I think that's, that's really tragic because, like I said, many times we're guilty of, of, of seeking his hand, but not his face. 
Uh, verse 6 says, this is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Not just those who turn up in church. Those who seek him. How many of you come here today to hear from heaven? Amen. This is the generation of those who seek him. What defines your week? Is it, uh, you know, just pursuing money or wealth or, or, or pursuing fame or doing this, that, or the other, entertainment? Uh, we need to be a people who seek the face of God in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the generation of those who seek him. Um, and so, uh, again, it says, who is this king of glory? It says, lift up your heads, O your gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And, uh, and so Christ is the king of glory. And that word in the Hebrew is uh, kabod, which essentially means weight, um, but only in a good sense. It means splendor. Uh, it means uh, copiousness, glorious, gloriously, glory, honor, honorable. And so, you know, this is talking about the king of glory. And so it's, it, it literally means weight, but in a good a sense of the word. Because let me say this, you know, when people speak of Christ as, as savior, uh, healer, deliverer, or provider, it doesn't recognize the awesome greatness of who he truly is. He is the king of glory. There is no one like him. He is altogether lovely, as it says in the Song of, Psalm, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 16. And so when we understand that, it changes everything. And until we do, it changes nothing. And that's why there's so many people who claim to be Christian, but their lives have never been changed. Because all they did was sign up for fire insurance, or sign up for healing, or sign up for provision. And there's so much more to who he truly is. He is the king of glory. You see, Isaiah encountered the king of glory in chapter 6, and he cried out, Woe is me, for I'm undone, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the king of glory. You see, when the glory of God touches you, you can never be the same again. Amen. When the glory of God touches you, you can't go back to the nightclub. You can't mess with alcohol or drugs or porn or all of the other baggage that so many believers mess with. The king in his glory. He is the king of glory. And I really believe in this day and age, there's going to be a different kind of preaching. There's going to be a different kind of church, a different kind of believer. We see in the early Christian church, the, the believers were, were, were serving God with all of their hearts. What I mean is this, there's no shortage of preachers who will speak of what he does. But sadly, many, many never go beyond this point and thus they preach an unbalanced message that constitutes nothing more than a shallow benefits package. When you hear some ministers and all they talk about is health and wealth and blessings and everything about rights and nothing about responsibility. We have a responsibility to take this message to the world. And I don't care how much money or how much wealth or how much fame a minister has been afforded. If he is not telling you, you have a responsibility to reach a lost and a dying world. If that is not what moves him, he is a false prophet. I'm just getting started. I've had two weeks. Sit there. I believe it's time for us to hear from God. I don't know about you, I, I, I can't do this. I can't do this in my strength and I can't just play the game of being a typical preacher. I believe if you're called by God, then act like he has called you and serve him. I'm not working for anybody here, I'm working for him. And I want to honor him because he is the king of glory.
There is so much more. Praise God, the Bible says, forget not all these benefits. Wonderful. But there's so much more than just the benefits of being saved. There is the benefit of knowing him. There is the benefit of coming into his presence. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him glory, glory in this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord. Exercising love and kindness. Judgment and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight. The Bible never said that we're to boast in what we have. We're to boast in our relationship with him. Do you know him? Have you spent time with him? Have you been in his presence? You know, the apostle Paul was privileged to see Christ. Think about that. People talk, talk about, you know, I got saved at a Reinhard Bonnke meeting. I got saved at a Billy Graham meeting. Paul, the apostle, got saved when Jesus came to visit him personally. That's, that's pretty impressive on your resume. I got led to Jesus by Jesus. He had seen Jesus, a light so bright, the glory of God literally blinded him. For three days, he was blind. Because you see, when the glory of God touches you, everything changes. And until it does, nothing changes. He already had a job, he already had an identity, he already had a calling, he knew where he was going and what he was doing. But when the glory of God touched him, he was blind. The things of the world no longer had any interest in him. The Bible says he didn't even eat. For three days, he just, he sat there amazed. May God raise up men and women like that in this nation. Men and women who have been captivated by the grace of God. Just like John Newton, a slave trader. You know, dealing in human misery. And tragically, that's still happening today with people trafficking and all of the evils that are going on in this world. But this man, even as a slave trader, a captain of a, a slave trading ship, he gets saved and he gets convicted of his sins. And God uses him to write this, the, the, the beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see, was there ever words penned so beautiful by, by, by a human being outside of the canon of scripture? And I believe God is going to breathe some life on some of these old hymns. Every time I hear that, that, that hymn, uh, uh, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. And, uh, you know, this, uh, I, I could quote the whole thing, but I, I, love, I love that Sam, or that, that hymn. I remember years ago I was working for AXA uh, as an insurance assessor, and we were having one of these weekends away where they were doing kind of leadership things. And, um, and so they, they broke us into groups. There was, there was a lot of people there, but I remember... They said, well, uh, we want you to, to say something about yourself that uh, people would never guess. And I said, well, um, when I was in, in America, I used to sing in a gospel choir. And uh, <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a mostly black gospel choir. I loved it. You know, I, I loved it. I wasn't great. I remember one time the lady, she was a sweet lady, used to lead it. And one time after practice, she, she said, wow, she said, you're getting better. I don't think you really sung off key this time. And I was like... I, had, I was completely oblivious, but I was praising the Lord. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so praise you, Jesus. But I remember uh, nobody believed that, you know, I was a young guy, 25 years of age, and um, nobody believed that, that I had sung in a gospel choir for some reason. And, um, and so when they heard that I had done that, uh, they all decided I wa they wanted me to sing a song. And... Uh, this was the song I chose. When I survey, I, saw all, I sang all four verses for them in length, and they all just sat there with their beers and gin and tonics and just watching in absolute shock. <laughs> 
But you know what? You, you read those words and they move you. They, that, that, you know, that's, that's, that, that hymn just moves me when I see the... Uh, you know, where the whole realm of nature, mind, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my, my, my soul, my life, my all. This is a day where God wants us to lay our all on the altar. Because whether you realize it or not, with God it's all or nothing. We find that hard to, 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 to understand or to grasp. And yet with God, it's all or nothing. Where, where do you believe that's in the Bible, John? Well, it's throughout the whole Bible. God gave his all for us. He expects us to give our all for him. I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's what the Bible actually says. The King James says, vomit you out of my mouth. And so this is not a day to be half-hearted. This is not a day for us to be playing with things and say, can I be a Christian and still blank? If you have to ask that question, no. No, you can't. Jesus wants us to lay our lives down before him because he is the king of glory. And it is the least, in the light of the, in the, light of the cross, in the light of all he has gone through, it's the least we can do is give our all for him. Why? Because he is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. The apostle Paul was privileged to see Christ, but he wanted even more. He wanted to know Christ. Philippians 3, 8 to 11. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, uh, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Amazingly, the fact that he had Seeing him at one time wasn't enough. He said, I want to do more than just see him. I want to do more than serve him. I want to know him. Is that the cry of your heart today? Yes. Do you desire to know the Lord? Oh, yes. Do you desire to know his will, even if he's going to say some things to you that you don't like? Because he's always saying things to me to make me uncomfortable. <laughs> that I may know him. That was the cry of Paul's heart, that I may know the Lord. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Let us aspire to more than simply seeing his acts. Like Moses, let's press on to know his ways. Psalm 103 and verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You see, many of you know me based on my acts. My wife knows me based on my ways. We can sit in a restaurant and she can order for me. She can, you know, God is... You know, God has blessed me so much, that precious woman. She's blessed my life so much. I love her and... Every day I wake up, I thank God I have another day to live uh, with her and to look on her sweet little face. Yeah, I do, I mean that. But she knows, she knows me so well. She knows my ways. And this is why the Bible says that he, he showed his acts to Israel. Israel knew God on a certain level. But it didn't go beyond the acts. Give, give us food, uh, you know, get, bring us deliverance, uh, give us provision, give us healing. And, and unfortunately, many preachers never go beyond that superficial level. There's a level far beyond just knowing his acts, and that is knowing his ways. He made known his acts to Israel, his, way, his ways to Moses. Yes, pastor, but I want to see the miracles. Don't we all? But this is where we've missed it. 
Mark chapter 16 says that these signs will follow those who believe. The Bible says that signs will follow believers, not believers will follow signs. And maybe the reason why we're not seeing the signs is that we're seeking signs and not His face. Are you actively seeking the Lord? Are you hungry to know Him? Are you desperate to know Him? Is there a desperation in your voice when you pray? Or like so many of us, are you just going through the motions and doing what you've done uh, for years? Ecclesiastes, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 33. I want to read this. This is such a beautiful chapter. Verse 5, so the Lord said to Moses, say to the children of Israel, you're a stiff-necked people. I could come into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore take off your ornaments that I may know what to do to you. And I really believe that this is the problem. Too many times we read the Bible and say, weren't they awful? Weren't those Pharisees terrible to reject Jesus? But you know, the Pharisees probably lived a holier life than the majority of Christians. I mean, they studied the scriptures. They gave their life to the study of the scriptures. I mean, they, 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 they took tithing to the point where they would tithe on their, on their herbs. And, uh, you know, these were uh, very devout, sincere men. But unfortunately, the, the, the savior of the world, the, the long-awaited Messiah, was right in front of their nose, and they didn't recognize it. And, and I think for too long the church has had a very simplistic uh, uh, view, a uh, very dismissive view of, of the Pharisees. Because I, I look at the Pharisees and sometimes I see myself. You know, sometimes we, we don't see the forest for the trees. And, and in the same way with this chapter, when God rebuked them for their being stiff-necked, I believe in many respects, if you look at this chapter, there's a, a parallel here that, that we can see because, so the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. I believe that happened particularly during COVID. Because I think anybody who was a pastor of, of, of people was quite disturbed by, by, the, by the response by many people during that season. And even... Knowing something in your head, knowing something in your heart, two different things. Whether you're a member of a church, whether you're leading a church. And, and unfortunately, I think there's been a lot of head knowledge, and I believe we have to change. We have to change the record, and we have to press in, and go beyond knowing things in our head, and, and start to know them in our hearts. And so it says they strip themselves of their ornaments. You know, an ornament is something that looks good, but it doesn't have any particular use other than looking good. And I think there's been a lot of ornaments within the, 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 the body of Christ, things that are powerless, things that, you know, we've done for years maybe, but, you know, we've, we no longer have the revelation of why we're even doing it. And so, anyway, it says, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. And so, and it says far from the camp, it wasn't convenient. And let me say this, if you want to encounter the king of glory, it's not going to be convenient. You're not going to encounter him on, on your time schedule. You're going to encounter him on his that means you, meet, you may need to cut your Netflix time radically and give that same time you're given to Netflix or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or any of that other that mindless garbage and start to give it to His Word. Start to give it to prayer. Start to give it to church in Jesus' name. If somebody can just kill that, thank you so much. So again, it says uh, it wasn't convenient because it was far from the camp. And so it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. 
And, you know, like I said, the thing I find at, at this point is that Mo- Moses had experienced some marvelous signs, some marvelous wonders, miraculous provision, miraculous protection, miraculous deliverance. And yet there was something greater because the Bible says the cloud came down, the Shekinah glory of God came down, and Moses spoke to God face to face. And there's a, a realm of intimacy that we can enjoy with God when we go beyond beyond, like I said, when our prayer life goes beyond presenting God with our list of wants and desires and needs and, and our, uh, giving him all of our problems, etc. God knows what you need before you even ask him. I'm not saying he doesn't care. Of course he does. He's your father. He loves you. He gave his son Jesus to die for you. But there is something more than just simply having your needs met and that is encountering the king in his glory. Could somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And the Lord talked with Moses. See, so many times people are coming before God. Oh, God, anoint me. Make me God's man or woman of the hour. Promote me. Use me, Lord. And they're completely missing the point. God doesn't want you to be used by him. He's your father. We use things and we throw them away. He will anoint you for his purposes, yes. But you know what? If you don't have an intimate relationship with him, he'll pass over you every time. And you'll be watching people all around you that God is using and you're wondering, why won't he use me? Because I'm so talented, I'm so qualified, I've got so many abilities. Because you're missing the point. It's not about being used by him, it's about knowing him. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know your heavenly father? Remember when Jesus prayed, he said, our father. You know, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my little kids. But the thing I enjoy most of all is when they just come and sit in my lap. Unfortunately, they're all getting too big for that now. So sometimes I look at my my little brown-eyed girl, Naomi, and I'd be sitting in the sitting room and say, come over here and sit in my lap. And she just looks at me like I'm so weird. Uh, But I remember those days, you know, when they're on those little sleep suits. And they'd put their arms around your neck when you were carrying them. I remember, I remember those days. I miss those days in some ways because they didn't answer back. But <laughs> there was other issues. You had to wipe their butt and feed them and whatever. But uh, anyway, you know, it's a blessing to see your children grow up. Now, bind you devil in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the devil's not going to distract from this message today in Jesus' name. So the Lord spoke, and the Lord talked to Moses, and the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Joshua had such a hunger for the presence of God that he decided, you know what, I'm going to live here. I'm going to live in this place. And, and it's interesting that when God was choosing somebody to succeed Moses, who was probably the greatest leader that ever lived, he chooses Joshua. Joshua was, yes, he was a warrior, he was a great leader, but the reality is the first and foremost thing in Joshua's life was the presence of God. He had a passion for the presence of God. He had a hunger to know the king of glory. Then Moses talked to the Lord. See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you um, have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you said, I know you by name, and you've also found grace in my sight. Isn't it wonderful to know that God knows our names? That he sees you. He sees you in your struggle. He sees you in your sorrow, in your, in your problems, in your trials. He sees you. You're not alone. You're never alone. He said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13 and verse 5. He said, I will be with you in trouble. You know, I thank God he's with us in the sunshine, but he's also with us in the storm. Remember that. 
And if you're facing a trial or a problem or a need or a challenge or a giant, know that you do not stand before that thing on your own. He stands right there with you. He's your father. He's got his arm around you. And he says, don't worry, kid. I got this. Amen. Because the battle is the Lord's. How many of you believe that the battle belongs to the Lord? <laughs> Quit looking at your problem through the lens of, of who you are. Quit looking at your giant through the lens of your ability or your strength. You need to start comparing your giant to God. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no giant that can stand before the Lord. And so this is why it says, uh, Moses said, I know you by name and you found grace in my sight. I was listening to Derek Prince last Monday. And, um, he said something that really, really blessed me and really ministered to me. Because how many of you know we all have ups and downs? And sometimes we go through, sometimes we go through some, some, some dark times where we run out of answers and we run out of ability, we run out of strength. You know, the Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, it doesn't say if, it says when. There will be times that you come to the end of your wisdom, your ability, your strength, your knowledge, and you realize I'm way out of my depth here right now. Any of you that are married gets there about twice a week. <laughs> but I, I was listening to Derek Prince as I was working out. How many of you know it's important to look after your body? Yes. Thank you for that. Two amens. Um, it's important. You know, uh, we had a Daniel fast in January. We started it. And um, I decided to keep some things on. And so I, I've cut sugar completely out of my diet. And you know what? I'm, 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 I'm very, very blessed um, because I haven't been sick since last year. And, and in Ireland, uh, let me, my wife will tell you, I mean, I would have the flu probably four or five times a year. About every, about every eight to ten weeks, I would come down with the flu in the past, in the past but not anymore. Amen. Because you know what? We're people of faith, but you know what? There's some natural things you can do. And uh, you, you need to exercise. You need to watch your diet. If you want, to, you want to be in this for the long haul. I've seen too many people I love, you know, uh, uh, promoted to heaven uh, uh, because they didn't take care of their bodies. We got to take care of our body. There's nobody saying amen. This is important. You got to take care of your body. Don't be praying, oh God, heal me, when you're stuffing yourself with donuts every day and all sorts of, of, of you know, refined foods that are bad for you and you're poisoning your body. Some of you say, Pastor, you're just stepping over the line right there. This is just, I'm never coming back here. <laughs> okay. But it so blessed me. I was listening to Derek Prince. And let me just say this. I've done that for years. Probably over, well over 30 years. Probably closer now to 35, 40 years. I've been working out three, four times a week. Because I want to live long. I want to see my children's children. Amen. I'm not being proud or arrogant. I'm just saying there are certain things you can do. Fasting is really helpful. Fast one day a week. It'll transform you. Transform your faith. And it'll, it'll help to kill a lot of those cravings you have. Because I know some of you are saying, but I can't give up donuts. I just, oh, no. They speak to me. <laughs> See, some of you, you're in the line at work or you know, out in a cafe. And you're not looking at the main courses. You're just like, you know, this, this, this chocolate cake that's speaking to you. You know you want me. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going off point here. Um, how many of you, be honest, you go to a restaurant, you don't look at the main courses. First thing you do is you look at dessert. Put your hand up. Come on. Uh, there's way more than you than that. Anyway. But Moses said, uh, sorry, what I wanted to say about Derek Prince was this. It's my fifth time coming around. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like the airport. You just got to wait for a break in the clouds. I, I, I was just very down at the time. And I remember listening to Derek Prince say this. Um, and he said this. You only connect with the grace of God when you come to the end of your ability. Because grace is God's ability to do what you can't do by yourself. 
So as long as you think you can do it by yourself, you're not relying on the grace of God. But there is, there is a place we can connect with God's ability, with God's grace, when we, just like the psalmist said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And it's in that place of discovering that we're not holding on to him, he's holding on to us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, my grace is sufficient for you. It's God's grace that will bring us through whatever we're facing. If God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it in Jesus' name. He is a faithful God. He hasn't forgotten you. He's inscribed you on the palm of his hands. He loves you. You're his child. Your name is written in his book in heaven. Glory to God. And if it isn't, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of the service to get saved. And so this is what Moses was saying. Our God was saying to Moses that you've said, I know you by name, and you've also found grace in my sight. Hallelujah. Do you know that we found grace in the sight of God because of Jesus? He bore our sin. He bore our shame. That's why you don't have to be living in condemnation, living with shame, saying, Lord, I should have, I could have, I might have, I didn't, etc., etc. It's under the blood. How many of you are glad that it's under the blood in Jesus' name? How many of you are glad that he said your sins and lawless deeds I'll remember no more? If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Do you know when somebody passes away, you know what you do? You dig a hole and you throw them in it. Well, I mean, it's a bit more elaborate than that. But essentially, you know, because they passed away. Well, your old person has passed away and you're made brand new because of God's glorious grace. And this is what I believe captivated Moses. And, and, and he was just captivated by the fact that, Lord, you, you know my name, and, 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 and I found grace in your sight. Moses, who was a murderer, I mean, he, he ended up killing a man. And, and yet God, in, in his grace and his mercy, calls Moses and said, okay, you tried to do it in your strength in the past. You tried to do it in your ability, your wisdom, your, your knowledge, but now you're going to do it in, in mine. Hallelujah. And so... Now, therefore, I pray, if I've found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you. Isn't it interesting how there's a parallel to what Paul was saying? I mean, in this place of intimacy, in this place of of glory, think of the privilege of being in the presence of the creator of the universe. And, And you can literally, just like a genie, ask him anything. I mean, he could have asked for money or wealth or power or land or any of the other things that, that people pursue. And what did he say? He said, Lord, show me now your way that I may know you. Is that the cry of your heart? Do you want to know him? Is that really, is that your drive? Is, is that what moves you? That you want to know the Lord? That you want to know the Lord who knows you? He knows you better than you know yourself. I mean, the fact is, we don't even understand ourselves at times. Anybody that's married says, I definitely don't understand my wife at times. And she doesn't understand you either, buddy. So uh, it's mutual. But, but, But here he cried out, says, that I may know you. That I might find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. And then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Think about it. Moses was in the desert. It was hot. I mean, it was terrible heat. There was no water. It was just a really uncomfortable place. There was snakes and scorpions. It was roasting hot during, during the day and freezing cold at night. And I know God, to some degree, maybe was protecting them from that by the pillar of cloud and the, the, the fire at night. But, you know, the reality is it wasn't a pleasant place. There was no nice flowers. There was no lush grass. There was no nice vegetation. It was a desert. And Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Moses was simply saying, Lord, I would prefer to dwell in a desert where you are than to dwell in a palace where you're not. And so he, he carries on and says, 
For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Except that you go with us. So what, what did Moses say was the, you know, the defining proof that God was with them. It wasn't how much wealth they had. Even though they, you know, the Bible says they plundered the Egyptians. It, it wasn't the power that they had. Think about it. I mean, I don't know anybody that has prayed and seen a sea split or a river turn to blood. I mean, they, they experienced some tremendous things, but he said the sign that you're with us is this, that your presence. Yes. Are you a marked man or woman of God? Are you marked by God's presence? Do you carry God's presence? When you go into your job, do people feel and, and sense the love of God coming through you? Do you bring God, God's presence into a situation or do you join in the gossip and, the, and the, you know, the stupidity at times that goes on around us? I mean, do you adapt to the environment you're in or do you change the environment you're in? Amen. Amen. Think about that. For how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Could you just lift your hand and say, Lord, thank you for grace. Thank you for grace, Lord. None of us are here today because we deserve it. Thank you for grace. Thank you that you've shown us grace. We didn't find you, Lord. You found us. We didn't save ourselves. We didn't deserve this. We found God's grace. He poured out his grace on us. Thank you, Lord, for grace. You know, some of you need to thank God for grace right now because except for grace, some of you would be dead. Some of you would have overdosed. Some of you would have ended up with somebody that would have destroyed your life. Some of you might have even taken your life. Some of you might have had your life taken from you by some person driven or moved by the devil. The grace of God. It's only when we get to heaven. It's only when we land on those heavenly shores. I believe that our eyes will truly be opened. To realize the grace that God showed to us. Those times that he lifted us. Those times that he loved us. Those times that he delivered us. Those times when the enemy was moving in for the kill. And God put his wings over us. Where he sent his angels on assignment to protect us. Those times that he healed us. Those times that he taught Touched us. Come on, give a shout of praise to the Lord. Just say today, thank you, Lord, for grace. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you found grace in my sight. And I know you by name. You know, I find this, this chapter fascinating. Because chapter 6, where they stripped themselves of their ornaments, that's separation. Verse 7, everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle meeting, that's supplication. Verse 15 and onwards, we see intercession, where, where Moses stands on behalf of the people of God. But it doesn't end there. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you've spoken. If you found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. As the worship group come forward. Through this chapter, we see separation. And I believe God is calling us to separation in this day. Separation is a place in your heart. It's a place in your heart. It's not about whether you make, wear makeup or jewelry or not. I think that's so silly. That's just superficial. That's superficial. God doesn't look at the thing man looks at. God looks at the heart. <laughs> you can be without makeup. You can have a dress down to your ankles. Be full of the devil. Separation, supplication, intercession. But then he moves into adoration. Verse 18, he said, please, show me your glory. Show me your glory. 
show me your glory. He didn't say, Lord, show me the money. Show me your power. Show me influence. Show me, show me. He said, Lord, show me your glory. I believe even in the Old Testament, they had some sense of, of this king of glory, that he was a king of glory. That, that, that they made a distinction between what God does and who he is. I think there's too many people in this day and age, even too many preachers who, who focus solely on what he does and ignore who he is. I don't know about you, I want to know him. I want him to show us his glory. I, I want to be here, uh, you, you know, in, in services where this place is, is packed with hungry people who are ready to worship, tears running down their faces. And when people are responding to the altar call, that there are hundreds of people coming forward, but they're not just walking forward like they're accepting a good deal. Well, I don't want to go to hell, so I better, I better do this. No, people coming forward in the deep conviction of sin in deep conviction of their need for Jesus, of deep conviction of a need for an encounter with the living God. And he said, please, show me your glory. Can you hear the cry of his heart all of these thousands of years later? It still, it still speaks to me because he cried out, Lord, please. He started by saying, please. We need to come back to a place where we reverence the presence of God. Yeah. Reverence. That means we're not out there during the service, you know, checking our Facebook or drinking coffee or stay home. You can look at Facebook all day or whatever you want. But if you come here, you come to worship. If you come here, you come to seek his face. You come ready to hear from heaven. Because I don't know any other way to preach. And he said, please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you and I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and I will compassion on whom I will have compassion. It goes beyond adoration to proclamation. I've come to a place where I, I tremble at the thought of the privilege that God has given me to preach the Word of God. So I, I, I can't give a nice TED talk. I have to declare what I believe the Spirit of God once spoken in that moment. And if, if that blesses you or if that makes you mad, ultimately, all I can do is obey God. If you decide to stay, if you decide to leave, there's nothing I can do. There is power in the proclamation of the Word of God. This isn't a day for theatrics. This is not a day for, for men and women of God to ape the world. And give a little perky little talks. This is a day where we are to come and hear from heaven. Where the word of God is to be delivered, you know, in fear and trembling. The Bible, book of Isaiah says, you know, on this one will I look on him who is of a contrite and repentant heart. And he who trembles at my word. You know, I've come to the place at home. When I read the word, I put it on my chair and I get on my knees. I remember reading, uh, you know, I think it was, it was Whitfield uh, talking about the third time reading through Matthew Henry's uh, concordance. I mean, that's huge. I can't even imagine how much time that took. But he said that he read it on his knees. You know, these men, uh, these, these men of God had such a hunger 
And then we wonder why they had such an impact on their, on their nation and, and on, on the world when, you know, when there was no social media, there was no adver advertising agencies, there were no jets, there were no, none of these mass tra transportation that's available to us today. And yet they shook their generation with the power of God. I mean, read John Wesley's journals and see, you know, 10,000 people here, 15,000 gathered here, you know, uh, 8, 10, 20,000 people gathering to hear the word of God. I want to see that. I want to see it. Separation, supplication, intercession, adoration, proclamation, but it doesn't end there. Identification. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my face, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And I believe this is a Titan shadow of how we are put in Christ. When the spear was put in his side on the cross, when he was, blood and water came out and, and the church was born. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet. Not I live, but Christ lives in me. He's talking about identification. We, we identify with Christ through his vicarious, uh, uh, you, you know, death, burial, and resurrection. When he died, we died. Uh, when he was buried, we were buried. And when he rose, we rose. We are identified with him. That's why God says, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And so as you stand to your feet today, God was speaking to Moses about Christ, the King of glory. Have you received him? Have you received him as your savior, as your Lord? Jesus is coming back again. Are you ready to stand before the Son of Man? The Bible says, I didn't get anywhere in my message today, but I'll, I'll finish it next week. But I believe I spoke what needed to be spoken. You know, I was listening to uh, Sharon Stone yesterday and she talked about how there's a, a realignment and a repurposing um, uh, happening within the body of Christ. And I believe there's a realignment even through this message. You know, you can look through, through a camera and, and that's fine, but you have to adjust. You have to adjust the focus. I believe God wants for us to adjust our focus in the light of His soon return. So before I pray for everybody, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, but with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to give you a moment to respond to Jesus Christ. He loved you enough to die for you on the cross. He died for you. Will you live for Him? I'm not asking, are you a good person, or do you pray, or were you sprinkled as a baby? I'm asking, have you been born again? Can you say with certainty, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life? And if this was my final day on planet Earth, I know that I would go to be with Him in heaven for eternity, because whether you realize it or not, there is only two options after this life, heaven or hell. Man goes to his eternal home, but the mourners go through the streets, the Bible says. When you take your final breath, you will go to your eternal home. And so I want to ask you this question. Do you know Jesus as your savior? Have you found peace with God? Do you have that assurance that Christ is enthroned as king in your heart? I'm not looking to embarrass you, but you need to say yes if you have not done so. If you would like to receive Jesus as your savior, I want you to put your hand up high and I'm gonna pray for you today. God bless you. 
God bless you. I see those two hands. Anybody else? Put your hand up high where I can see it. God bless you, sir. Anybody else? God bless you, sir. Is there anybody else ready to surrender your life to Jesus? Amen. Put your hand up high where I can see it. Ushers, help me out here. God bless you. I see that hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see that hand. God bless you. Is there anybody else here today? You're ready to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. I see that hand. God bless you. You see, the Lord is he's, he's moving in this place. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. He's going to do a miracle in your life. But don't allow pride to stop you from missing the miracle of the moment. If you've never been saved, put your hand up and I'm going to pray for you today as well. Or if you've been away from Him, you've been backslidden, you've been away from the Lord, but today you want to come back to Him, put your hand up as well in Jesus' name. I want to include you in that prayer. If you've been backslidden, but you want to come back to the Lord, amen. Thank you. I see those hands. Amen. I see those hands. Anybody else today, you want to come back to Him. You're, you're ready to commit your life to the Lord Jesus. I see that hand. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand. Praise God. I see that hand. God bless you. See the Spirit. I see that hand. God bless you. The Spirit of God is moving. Come on. Give the Lord praise. The Lord loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. You know, during COVID, I went through such a dark time. My wife was so kind, you know, looking after me. I was in bed for about six weeks could barely get out of bed to go to the bathroom. I remember some nights it was so dark because like sometimes it went for, it seemed like days without sleeping. I just couldn't sleep because I had this hacking cough. And um, I remember one night I just heard the voice of the devil so clear saying to me, I'm going to kill you and everyone that you hold dear. And, and it was during that season I just started to feel the prayers and the intercession of the, the, the people of God who were who are praying for me. Like, I felt His love like I'd never felt it before. I can't describe it. And I came out of that dark season with such a revelation of how God loves people. And I know in the past at times maybe my preaching lacked that, you know, but I, I just came out of that season of brokenness with such a revelation of, of how God loves people and how He wants people to know Him and how He wants people to, to, to encounter His love and to be set free from the bondages and chains. And it, you know, it grieves the heart of God to see young people overdosing. It grieves the heart of God to see people suffering with depression or despair or dying before their time. And, but you know what? I believe right now God is, is doing a realignment in our hearts and in this church and throughout the nations. And so those of you who put your hand up, could you just come down here and we're going to pray a simple prayer with you today in Jesus name. Come on, praise God. Give them an encouragement as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, you stay here guys. Just stay here. Amen. I'm going to pray, pray a simple prayer with you. Come on, give them an encouragement as they come. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Isn't that beautiful? Could you stretch your hands towards them today? And if some of our, our prayer team or life group leaders could come up and stand with them. I want you to just look at me and pray the simple prayer. The Lord loves you. Amen. You are special to Him. He paid a price for your soul. He paid a price in blood at the cross. And He wants you to know Him. And He wants you to serve Him. And God's going to do a miracle in your heart right now. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Amen. Stretch your hand towards these precious men and women right now. God's going to do a miracle in their lives. I want you to just look at me and pray this simple prayer. And God's going to do a miracle in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart that you were born of a virgin, that you lived a perfect life, and that when you died on the cross, you died in my place, bearing my sin and shame. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus Christ, and forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Amen. If you believe that, give a shout of praise to the Lord. <laughs> I, I want
want you to stay here because I, I want I want somebody to pray a prayer with you right now. We need some more guys, um, some of our life group and prayer group. Uh, if you can come and just pray with these precious men and women in, in these uh, early moments, I would just encourage you three things. Uh, pray, get a Bible, come to church. Three vital things and you'll grow. Amen. Praise you, Jesus.
presence, dance in your presence, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Could you just lift your hands before the Lord today? Just tell the Lord, I'm thirsty for you. Come on, declare it. Lord, I'm thirsty for you. Lord, I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry to know you. Beyond where I've been. Bring me deeper, Lord. In Jesus' name. Spirit of God, move in this place. Move in this place by your power, by your spirit, Lord. Touch, heal, deliver. In Jesus' name, Lord, touch your people. Let them walk out today with a new sense of your presence. Let them walk out with a new sense of your joy. In Jesus' name, Lord, let them know you are with them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Lift them, Lord. Change them, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Deliver them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Deliver them, Lord God. From the hold of anything that is holding them back. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Just one more time. Say, Lord, I'm thirsty. For more of you. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, give a shout of praise. 